All right, thank you. So uh, my name is Andrew Fan, and here I'm with Xu Hong Liu. So together we will present in our uh, deep motion entry to the Jinya Challenge 2022. So uh, first, I would like to talk about the motivation of this method we developed for the challenge. So uh, the one of the motivation for us to develop this method is due to the ambiguity in the gesture synthesis. And this is the kind of thing we sometimes encounter uh, when trying to learn the gesture synthesis model from a data set. Here I'm just going to show a very quick example. These are, uh, these are two different uh, gesture motions synthesized from the same utterance using our model. When, when they, they were born, born they are born with the ability of uh, posing at the, the camera. camera. So uh, even though this is a very short segment, but what I'm trying to show you is that uh, for both uh, for both gestures, they both look kind of plausible for this uh, utterance. And this is the kind of thing we may see in a gesture data set as well. So for example, the same person uh, for the same utterance, he may be doing using his left hand for a gesture, but sometimes he may also be using the, his right hand for the gesture for a very similar utterance. And this makes it more difficult if we try to use a, a deterministic regression model to directly learn the gesture. Because in this, se in this set set setting, like you are not going to learn either of the gestures, you are likely just learn the average of them. And this will also cause problems when we try to synthesize, use the model to synthesize the gesture. Okay, so here I'm just uh, want to show some example of how the result will look like if we try to use the deterministic regression model to learn the gestures. So here on the left is the ground truth. On the right, we pick uh, two baseline models that use deterministic regressions. Create those organizations in that way. What we have to actually do is build these entrepreneurial state organizations. DARPA that funded the internet and Siri actually thought really hard about this, how to welcome failure, because you will fail. You will, you will fail, fail when you innovate. innovate. One, One out of, out of ten, 10 experiments, experiments have any, you know. So you will see that uh, compared to the ground truth, uh, this kind of uh, deterministic regression model seems to be producing a more damping motion. And this makes the gesture look less realistic when you compare that with the ground truth. So the main motivation of our method here is we hope to address this kind of the issues uh, when uh, learning the gesture generator. So here we are taking some inspiration from the recent progress in text-to-image synthesis. So there has been a lot of the progress like from the DALI uh, to DALI 2 to like this, all, all these other models that has been happening recently. And one of the other than generating very realistic images, one uh, key uh, advantage of this type of method is that they are capable of generating a variation of different kinds of image, but from the same text input. So we kind of hope to take the analogy of this kind of capability, but apply them for gesture motion synthesis. And that's why uh, we uh, propose a, a model based on VQVAE and uh, autoregressive uh, predictions. And uh, in, uh, in the next part, Shi Hong will talk more about uh, these methods. Our proposal can be summarized as a two-stage model a VQVAE for gesture reconstruction and a, an autoregressive transformer model for gesture inference. Factor continuized variation autoencoder is also known as VQVAE. It's a type, type of variation autoencoder that uses factor continuized station to obtain discrete latent representation of input data. As the picture shows above, it basically contains an encoder and a decoder. Both consist of traditional convolution layers. Training VQVAE is aimed to extract small gesture units as tokens from raw gestures. What we want here is to get the middle discrete feature representation of the input gestures, also can be called as codebook vectors. The point to utilize VQVAE is to model gesture as discrete tokens instead of continuous signals. In this way, we could make this to form a regression model into a classification model to avoid the problem of averaging gestures as Andrew mentioned before. The training process can be viewed as clustering different gestures into different codable vectors and also to train the vectors as well. The second stage is to predict the tokens and generate new gestures. In the process, 
We first freeze the VQV and get the gesture token by its encoder. By the encoder, we pre-train and take the token as our input along with some conditional vectors to predict the next token. To autoregressively generate the whole clip. During the training, the loss is simply cross entry law, cross entropy loss between inputs and the generated tokens, since the tokens are discrete. If the same speech could generate two different gestures, this method can generate both gestures with different probabilities by using sample functions we could choose in the inference stage. In this case, we could get different output gestures with the same input. Compared to RIM-based models like sequence-to-sequence, transformer-based architecture has the advantage of long sequence dependency that the next token is based on the whole previous sequence instead of limited window sets. Here is the curve we get for training VQVA. It turns out that like 2x down sampling will produce lower reconstruction errors than 4x, but will lead to more instability in the inference stage also. For, from here, you can see that larger cobalt size also will make gesture units more varied and lead to lower reconstruction error, but will cause instability in the inference stage. Here is the result for our submission to Junior Challenge 2022. As you can see here, our submission is among top three in human evaluations for naturalists and top four in full body gestures. Okay, so uh, now we will discuss about the lessons we learned uh, while developing this method for the Junior Challenge. So first of all, uh, we found that uh, VQVA is able to produce a reasonably good uh, gesture results, especially like from the human evaluation results for the naturalness of the gesture. And the main reason is because that you can kind of think of VQVA as a uh, try to uh, learn this discrete gesture tokens from the original gesture. So it's almost like you are cutting the original gesture into a lot of small segments and then rearrange them to form the new gestures. And that's kind of the reason uh, VQVA can uh, preserve this gesture quality from the original data. And the second thing we found is that VQVA is actually not very easy to train. You need to kind of tune some parameter like the codebook size and such. Otherwise, you may get into some issue with codebook collapse, so the VQVA will not learn anything. And one thing in particular is that this kind of tuning may be required for different data sets. At least from our experience, uh, we originally developed this VQVA method and tuned the parameter on the Trinity data set. But later, when we try to move this model and train on the Genia Challenge data set, we found that uh, the result is not good and we actually need to further tune in the parameter to get a better of reconstruction results. And the third thing we found is that uh, for the full body motion synthesis, uh, the, the model, uh, the result we are producing has a lot of weight shifting movements and that looks kind of like an artifact. So that means that, that uh, it may require some special handling in the root uh, translation and the rotation to avoid this kind of artifacts. So right now we just concatenate all the poses together and that might be the reason, uh, that might be, and, and learn the root uh, transformation directly with all other joints. And that might be the reason for this uh, artifacts. And finally, uh, in the human evaluation, we found that the score for the uh, gesture appropriateness is still below average for our master. So that means there's still a lot of room to improve the actual uh, token prediction. So uh, although the VQVA can already uh, reconstruct the gesture reasonably well, but we still need to kind of predict the token well, uh, pre predict the token sequence well, so they are aligning well with the input speech. So those are the, the kind of the lesson we learn. So in conclusion, for this challenge, we have developed this two-stage approach that utilizes VQVA for gesture synthesis. Of course, uh, during the challenge, we found there are still a few things that we need to further improve uh, for the future. Uh, so 